As the blockade stretch into another day, a sense of urgency takes hold in Ottawa. The pressure is severe. We understand uh, the importance, uh, the economic impact. The Prime Minister pressed to find a way out of the crisis at what he calls a critical time. Patience may be in short supply, and that makes it more valuable than ever. Calling for dialogue as the only path forward. They need to be heard. A message backed to varying degrees by these chiefs. It will be a self-defeating purpose to continue on with the blockade. So I'm hoping that reason and peace are going to prevail. Today again, of course, we're calling for, for calm. We're calling for creativity and constructive dialogue. Dialogue as well in the halls of Parliament, with Justin Trudeau looping in opposition leaders at a closed-door meeting. All except Conservative leader Andrew Scheer. He wasn't invited. That the actions of these radical activists are illegal. After comments the other leaders called unacceptable. The clash dominated the day. Dialogue is not going to pay the bills for people who are facing layoffs. Simple question, on what day will these illegal blockades be taken down? Mr. Speaker, the Conservative Party of Canada continues to demonstrate that it does not understand uh, that the path forward is concrete actions uh, in reconciliation, in dialogue. Only it's far easier to promote dialogue than to force a meeting with hereditary chiefs who oppose the pipeline. This has to be at their invitation, as Minister Miller said, that there is not a lot of trust. We're not going to talk uh, with a gun pointed at our heads. And so the partisan lines are clearly drawn. The Liberals have most leaders on side advocating talks. Tonight, the minister had what's described as a long and positive phone call with the hereditary chiefs. But still, no date for a face-to-face -face meeting with some RCMP still on Wet'suwet'en land. Salima Shivji, CBC News, Ottawa. All right, so let's get some insight here from Rosie Barton, our chief political correspondent. We need a sense of what's happening behind the scenes, Rosie. So what are you hearing about the government strategy on this? Well, they're certainly working hard, Adrian. They, they're trying to come up with a solution. They've been doing that all weekend. Part of it seems to be about building a coalition of players who are all on the same page as the government. That's why this morning you saw the chief of the AFN, three Mohawk Grand Chiefs, all calling for the situation to de-escalate, finding a way for the Mohawks, blocking those rail tracks to be able to walk away and sort of save face, knowing they were heard. It also happened later with the opposition uh, leaders, with the exception of Andrew Scheer, as you heard there. All of the progressive parties inside the House now are on the same page for how this needs to end, meaning through talk, and Sheer sort of left out of the situation entirely. What you didn't hear today, though, was any talk of timelines. It's believed that that would sort of inflame the situation. It's fair to say the government knows this can't go on forever because of those real economic consequences. So the focus right now is primarily on trying to get a meeting with the Wet'suwet'en, and once they have that commitment, the hope is to negotiate something there that would get the blockades down. There's a lot happening behind the scenes and not a lot of detail about the nature of the negotiations. Okay, so that pressure is not to be underestimated. No, the government's under some really intense pressure, both from the First Nations communities, business, people who want to get their goods moved across the country, from the official opposition, the Conservatives, who see an opportunity here to give voice to some of the people in this country who are running out of patience. The government also doesn't have a whole lot of leverage here, Adrian. Um, so there's pressure, particularly on the Prime Minister, who has made reconciliation his calling card again today talked about the willingness for all sides to find a solution. It's not clear what happens if the government fails, though. What, what is the other solution? But they believe that if they succeed, they can certainly point to this as proof that things can be done differently, differently and that reconciliation does matter. All right, Rosie, thanks very much. Thanks.